first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongeth to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavakakwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai. And double honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that teaches truth well and that continue and that continue to teach us truth well and to the hopeful elect across the globe okay and to the few brothers and sisters listening and also learning across the globe okay and I want to say to what you have by sham you have a shy for giving me another day you know to glorify his name to glorify his works oh he's done so much marvelous things okay oh we receive good and we receive bad we receive evil and we receive good but guess what you have still has his men still teaching this truth still being fervent still being genuine let's go to um, Galatians 2 a few things I want to speak on the main topic of this lesson is going to be today faith faith because it's one thing we have faith but once we have faith guess what's going to be happening that's why you have something called the adversary that's why you have something called Satan because in the midst of having faith you're going to have all these things around you that are, or that are going to try to stop your faith all these different things so faith faith needs to be maintained it's one thing having faith but with this faith we have it needs to be maintained there's things you need to this thing see a man cannot just cannot just say well i just have faith and that's it that's it now that faith gets tested you've got to hold on to faith you've got to pray you've got to do so much different things to hold on to that faith you've got to study which is one of the most important things prayer and studying because if you're not praying or studying your, your faith is going to start diminishing a man could have great faith but if he ain't doing the things to maintain that faith it's going to start what dwindling let's go to Galatians 2 I want to do less speaking but here we just minute. Let, let the scripture speak let's go to Galatians 2 and 16 knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law this is Paul speaking and if anybody knew about the law, it was Paul. Okay. He was a master of the law. Okay. So he said, a man is not going to be justified by the works of the law. How much laws you kept. Because the reason why we needed Jehovah because we weren't keeping the laws. Okay. Like that. We wasn't, we wasn't keeping our end of the bargain. Okay. So it's not so much. It's not, it's not, look. It's not so much the laws within itself that's going to save you. This is what Paul was trying to expound. We're well, not trying to. This way, he was expounding unto the church of, of Galatia by the works of the law. So it's nothing to do with the law that you're going to be saved. But do we keep the laws? Yes, to the best of our ability. But by by the faith of Yahweh Mashiach, by it, so by faith, that's what's going to justify you. your faith in Yahweh not by the law, not by the keeping of the law. Your faith in Yahweh Shai, which is going to justify you. In the time of Jacob's trouble, in the time of um, all this impending danger. It's not going to be so much the law that justifies. It's going to be what your faith in Yahweh Shai that justifies. That's what's going to be the, that delivers you. Your faith, your belief. But by faith of Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, even we have... Even we have believed in Yahweh Shemashiach that we might be justified, and that's what we want. We want to be justified in the presence of Yahweh Shai, not justified in the eyes of men, but justified in the presence of Yahweh Shai. That we might be justified by the by the faith of Mashiach. That's the most important thing, faith. And that's what's going to justify a man of the Lord through his faith. And not by works of the law. So it says clearly, not, it's not going to be by any works of the law. So much any laws you kept. 
that kept you justified. It was by your faith in Yahweh Shai. By your belief, you were justified. Okay? For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Why did it say? By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Because you break one, you break all. So by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. You can't be justified by the law in itself. Because you've broken, we've broken many other laws which are worthy of death. <laughs> so you can't be justified by the law yourself. You're justified for your shy. Because breaking of the law, it brings death. So who would justify you from a breaking of that law? Yahweh Shai. But if while we seek to be justified by Mashiach, we ourselves also are found sinners. How are we found sinners? Through the law. Almost sin, transgression of the law. So we are found as sinners. Is therefore Mashiach the minister of sin? The answer is no. God forbid. Okay. Because he's what he's not given any man any license to sin. For if I build again these things which I have destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Okay. For though for I through the law am dead to the law. Okay. How? But I might live unto the most high. So through Yahweh Shai. We're dead to the law. Why? Because we're living now in Yahweh Shai. We're not so we're not bondage to sin. We're bondage to what? Yahweh Shai. To life, to the spirit. So the flesh doesn't really have any reign over us because we're in Yahweh Shai. Okay. I am crucified with Mashiach. Dead with Mashiach. See, the old man died with Mashiach. You were reborn through Mashiach, through Yahweh Shai. Okay. Nevertheless, I live. So you're dead. You're dead to this world through Mashiach, but you've been risen. Nevertheless, I live through him. Yet not I, but Mashiach liveth in me. So if Mashiach liveth in you, guess what? The spirit of Mashiach. Is over the law. So now we're living for Yahweh Shai. Now we have life in us. Now we have an intercessor for our sins. Yet not I, but Mashiach liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of the Most High. So even though we're in the flesh, we're living in Yahweh Shai. Through the Spirit. Let me read that right again. Yet not, but I be liveth in Salakia. So yet not I, but Mashiach liveth in me. That means his spirit dwells in you. And the life which I now live in the flesh. Why does it say the life which I now live in the flesh? Because the former lives we were living, it was in the flesh and we had no intercessor. We didn't know what we were doing. But now we have what? Yahweh Shai. As a mediator, I live by the faith of the Son of the Most High. So now we're living by faith, not by the flesh. So if you're living by faith, you're living by the Spirit. Who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of the Most High. Bear me just a minute, bear me just a minute. We go back to that. But the main point, I am crucified with Mashiach. Let's quickly go to Colossians, Baba Kasha. And we go back to where we were. Go to Colossians. That's why I've all, that's why Yahweh Shai is so important. And in no way does this mean that the, the law ain't important. No, because we still keep the law. But right now, it's a rehearsal. But it's about faith. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Let's go to the Colossians. Colossians 3. If you then be risen with Mashiach. So again, it says... If he be risen. So what's part of being risen with Mashiach? Being dead to the world. But alive in Yahweh Shai. That's being risen. And how have we been risen? He's risen us through this word. Seek those things which are above. So we're seeking the things which are above. The spiritual things. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. These things are from above. We're not seeking the things that we can see. We're seeking the things that are from above. Okay. 
We're seeking et eternal glory with Yahabashai. Eternal excellence. This is what we're seeking. Where Mashiach sitteth on the right hand of the Most High, because right now he's dwelling, he's sitting on the right hand of the, he the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Boy, oh boy, that just bit me. I thought I felt something. The red ant as well. Bear me just a minute. So that's, that's what we're seeking. Okay. That's what we are seeking. A new life in Yahabashai. Okay. That sit up on the right hand of the Most High. Set verse 2. Set your affection. Affection is your love, your desire, your want. Set your affection on things above. That's what we're doing. We're setting our affections, our love on things above, the heavenly things. Ah oh, man, I hope I ain't lost that. Bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. Shit. Just lost the page, Galatians. Set your affection on things above. So that's what our affections are on. Okay, bear me just a minute. Found it. Our things are on the things above. That's what we're setting our fiction. That's what we're setting our love upon. Okay. That's what we're setting our love upon. Everything else is vain. Okay. Things above, not on things on the earth. So, again, while we're in this truth, our things are not on the carnal. It's on the things above. More wisdom. More faith. Stronger mental fortitude. These are all the things that come above. Okay. Where was I? Not on things on earth because the people of it, see, the people of this world, they're looking for a quick gain. They're, they're looking at the, they're looking at the heaven now. We're not looking at the heaven now. This this truth it takes vision. Can you vi can you vision sitting with your habashai? Can you vision the rest of the hundred and forty four thousand and the one third? You ruling, you being crowned Lord willing. Are you, are you visioning this? Can you vision these other planets? <laughs> You gotta have vision to believe. Belief always also take it takes vision. Because what is faith? The what the substance of things hoped for but not seen. So to have faith, it takes you need to have vision. And people of this where they don't have vision, that's why they don't have faith. As some say what you got is what's what's it? See it, see it to believe it. We don't look, we see it, but guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We see it through our mind's eye. It's not physical, it's not, it's not tangible. If you understand, it's not, it's not tangible. The most, the, the reason why most Christians go to church because they want the tangible. They want the gifts, they want the prosperity. This truth, see, it's different for us in the truth. The man, we can see it in our mind's eye. Even though it's not there, even though we can't feel it, because if you couldn't see it, guess what? You wouldn't have faith. You wouldn't be moved to do this work. So the, trust me, the men of the Lord see it. And that's 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 faith. What did Yahweh say to one of his disciples? Bless are, bless are you that have not seen but yet still believed. Because you had one of the, one of the disciples, they needed to what to touch um Yahweh the holes, his piercings, and his hands to believe. So we know there's different levels of faith, but whatever you faith you have, you gotta hold up, hold on to that faith. So we've got, got Colossians three, for you are dead and your life is hid with Mashiach on the Most High. So what does it mean we are dead? We are dead to this world. We are dead to this world. 
but alive in Mashiach. So have you ever wondered why people say you've changed? You're different. Why don't you smile anymore? Well, the brothers still smile, just we don't smile as much as we should. For we are dead in Mashiach, but alive. So that's part of the old man being what? Done away with. Now we have a new life. That's why people look at you different. Some people are bugging out. What now? That's not him. What's happened to him? Well, we see how much he changed you. And it's a process. You're not going to change overnight. You're not going to change within two weeks. You're not going to change within a year. It's a process. Until the kingdom, until you're changed, it's a process. And this is what certain men in, in the truth don't understand as well. They expect you to be in this truth five years, ten years, and everything to change. No, there's supposed to be a change. Because if you've been in this two years, there's no change. There's a problem. If you've been in this five years, there's no change. There's a problem. But as long as there is a change, okay? Because you, you need to ask yourself, if you've been in five, ten years, fifteen years, and you, there's no change, you're just the same man. The only difference is you know you're an Israelite. Then obviously there's, there's an issue, there's a, there's a problem, a major problem. That means Yahawashai is not working on you. Right here, right now, Yahawashai is only working on what the elect. We're not here for all of Israel. There's no grey areas with this truth. Men are trying to look for grey areas. Oh, maybe we can all come together, but he's your brother. Yes, he's a brother by seed line. You have a brother by sea line, but he's not a brother in spirit. The scriptures talk about those that are born of the flesh and those that are born of the spirit. Those that are born of the spirit are of the elect. They're born of the spirit. They were predestined to be born of the spirit. They were predestined to do the things of the spirit. Those that are born of the flesh, they were born to be what? Carnal. Not to receive the things of the spirit. It's all down to predestination. Even with works. Even with works, because you may be thinking, well, maybe if I do a thousand, a thousand videos uh, a week, God, that'll get me. That's not what's going to get you saved. But the elect, they have a particular spirit within them that's going to lead them to do the works. I've, I've, I've never said, oh, because you do this much works, so you're going to be saved. No, because yeah, it's, yeah, Havashai says in Matthew 7 and 24, wasn't you doing many full, wonderful works? And I will say to me, I, I never knew you. So it's, it's, not, it's not down to that. But the faith and the works, they go hand in hand. Because that shows your dedication, that shows your love, that shows your love for Yahweh Shai, that shows your fear for Yahweh Shai, is your, is your works. It shows how much you care. Because you can't say you care, you have faith, but your works are null and void. And this don't apply to sisters that are helpers. This, that, this doesn't, no, nah, it's so lucky, you know what? You can still apply this to helpers, because helpers, that's works. Even if you're a helper, that still works. But it doesn't apply to those that are, don't know they're of the elect and they're beamed up in the last second. Of course it don't apply to them because they never knew. They were just of the, they were walking around and they were of the elect and they were beamed up. It doesn't apply to them. It applies to those that are in the truth that know better. All right, you have faith, you know what to do. You've you got to teach. The Lord requires these men to be out there as well. To go out there, show your faith. If it's in you, you got this word, really, you should be out on the highway. What's stopping you from being out on the highways and byways? Really, you should be out on the highways and byways. What's stopping you? What is stopping you from going out on the highway? Because I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. What's stopping you from doing it? You haven't got an hour, 10, 30, 40 minutes to, to go out into a highways, find a destination, London. It's quite big, it's quite vast. You got east, you got south, you got north, you got west. You 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 pick a borough, pick pick somewhere and set up post. Wouldn't that be beautiful if you see brothers doing that and still coming to camp? But brothers, they, they have a they have a um what's it what's it what a small a small mentality when it comes to pushing the truth. A very base and small mentality. You want to have the mentality. You want to do as much as you can. Use your initiative. Use your spiritual mind that Yahweh has given you. When, we're still on Colossians 3 and 4. When Mashiach, who is our life, so he's our life now, it's not about ourselves, shall appear, then you shall also appear with him in glory. Okay? 
because we, we're, we're Lord willing, we're doing the things that please Him. Okay. So now, back to Galatians. Okay, we're back to Galatians. Galatians 2 and 21. I do not frustrate the grace of the Most High. So, even though we have faith, even though we have mercy, we still do not frustrate the grace of the Most High. You know, you know what I mean? So frustrating the grace of the Most High is just do, doing what you want. Right now, we be, and that's another thing, we've been given it. Why do you think we've been given this grace period? Grace period is a mercy period. So we can do the work, so we can please Yahweh Shai. The scripture says, charity covereth a multitude of sins. So with us doing this, we're covering a multitude of sins. But guess what? If you're lukewarm, how are you covering your multitude of sins? You're actually stacking up sins. Right? Let's go to Galatians 2 and 21. For I do not frustrate the grace of the Most High. For if righteousness come by the law, Ren Mashiach is dead in vain. So if your righteousness was by the law, that would mean Yahweh Shai would... That mean he's... um. Bear me just a minute. That, let me read that again. That means Mashiach is dead in vain. That means what he done, his crucifixion, would be in vain. Let's read that again. For I do not frustrate the grace of the Most High. For if righteousness cometh by the law, okay, then Mashiach is dead in vain. So if our righteousness was just based on the law, that means Yahabashah's death would be in vain. If it was just based, if your righteousness was just based upon the law but our righteousness is not just based upon the law even though the laws are our righteousness it tells us that in Deuteronomy morning it tells us that in Deuteronomy 4 and 6 this is your wisdom and your righteousness amongst the nations but that's not going to be it itself okay you know what I mean It's not based off the law of itself. Our righteousness comes through faith. This is what Paul was trying to show you. Ren Mashiach is dead in vain. Why? Because if it was all according to the law, then guess what? What would be the need of Yahweh's crucifixion? That's why the scripture says, with all that, with all that wisdom, get understanding. I understand what Yahweh was on the scene for. All right, does that mean he didn't? He didn't know. He didn't die, so you can do what you want. But it was letting you know. All right. Prior to him being on the scene, which Yahweh was always on the scene. He's been there from the beginning. But I'm talking about in the flesh. What was happening? Our people were committing sin. They would get a turtle dove, or get whatever else it was. And what would they do? What would they do? Hmm. What would they do? They would run that sacrifice into the ground. And the Heavenly Father would see right through that. Okay, they would commit a sin and run that, run that sacrifice right into the ground. Okay. So, Yahweh Shah set it up. He's like, no, now, there's going to be one way. You're going to go through my son. Okay. He's going to be, what, the mediator for us. You commit a sin, you have to go through him. Repentance. Okay, so... It's, it was not going to be a thing of sacrificing turtle doves or lambs. You were going to have to go through your Habashai. And that's why nobody can creep up no other way now. Because now you have to go straight through your Habashai. And a lot of men don't want to do that. Bear me just a minute. You see, you see, you see, you see how, um, you see how everything is set out now. So now it's not a thing where you could just sneak, do a sin, sneak and think nobody sees. No. You have to go through your have a shy confession. Woo, bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute, bear me just a minute, bear me just a minute. I use that word confession.
because Yahweh knows our minds. Okay, can't come. You can't come up no other way. It's through Yahweh, not your own way, not your own um righteousness that you try to establish. Because Christians, they like to establish their own righteousness. They tell you up and down. They're a good. The average person of this world, they tell you they're a good person. You ask them, oh, I'm, I'm a good person. Well, what makes you good? Yahweh said, it's, it's, it's not, not one is good. Not one is good. He's, when they said, he, they said that to him, someone said, oh, good mom, good master. He said, it's not one is good except from the heavenly father, Yahweh. Okay. Good. I think that's, that's, that's uh, what's it, patting your own back. We've done evil. Why, we, why do you think we're in this condition? Because we went off. Bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. There's a lot of good stuff here. So let's go to Romans. Yeah, let's go to Romans 10. Bear me just a minute. Because you have to come in wrong way. Hold that. See if we can find another one. Bear me just a minute. You have to go. You have to go through the sun. Can't come up no other way. All right. Okay. This is John ten. We get straight to it. Go to John 10 and 7. Ren said Yahweh unto Rem again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. So Yahweh is the door, he's the entry. Okay. To the sheep. There's no other way. A door is what a passage to the ent to the entrance. Okay. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. In other words, deceivers, treacherous. Okay. They tried to come in some other way. The scripture says there's certain men in the truth what Jude 1 and 4 that have crept in unaware. So you've got to come in the right way. But the sheep did not hear them. Especially if you're teaching another philosophy. You can't merge any black unconscious rubbish with it. Whatever you're trying to merge with this truth, you can't do that. Because it doesn't belong in the truth. You can't merge another doctrine. with It does not belong in the truth. So these are the thieves, these are the robbers, those that try to come in some other way, sneaking, okay? And you may, you may think, oh, maybe if I hide behind the camera, you can't hide behind the camera all your life, okay? You can't do that. You have a believe in this truth or you don't, you have a have faith or you don't. So let's go back to where we were, let's go to Romans 10. And eight, but what say if it the word is nine, ninety, even in thy mouth, okay. And in thine heart, thy mind, that is the word of faith, and that's through what someone who what preaching the word unto you, okay, which we preach that if thou confess, if thou shalt confess, it's about confession. Okay, not, not about no turtle of sacrifice anymore. Confession. With thy mouth, Yahweh Shai, Lord Yahweh Shai, it's like with thy mouth, the Lord Yahweh Shai, and shall believe. So you've got to believe in the name first and foremost, and believe that belief is faith. Trust in thine heart, thy mind, that the Most High have raised him from the dead. Do you believe in the resurrection? That's a part of that faith as well. Do you believe in the resurrection? If you don't believe in the resurrection of Yahweh Shai, guess what that makes you? An antichrist. The scriptures tell you that in John also. Okay. Do you believe that he rose from the dead? Do you believe he resurrected? That's part of that faith. Thou shalt be saved. So you've got to believe the resurrection of Yahweh Shai, he rose from the dead. You know, you know this Christian, most Christians don't believe that. Most Christians don't believe that. They just believe he was a, a, a spirit, slug, slug, a spirit floating. Floating about. You know? You have to believe this. 
Yahabashah was on when he came on the earth, he came as a man in the flesh. A spiritual man in the flesh. He experienced pain like we experienced. Okay. Yes, he had a biological father and mother. Okay. But he also had a father in heaven. His name was what? Yahweh. Do you believe in that? Because if you don't believe in that, what good is it? It's the foundation of our faith. The resurrection is, uh, is the main foundation of our faith. You can't say you believe in Yahweh Shah, but you, doesn't, you don't believe his, res his resurrection. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. It says with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the heart, with the mind, man believeth unto righteousness. Okay. And with the mouth. Bear me just a minute. Confession is made unto salvation. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So with the heart, with the mind, man believeth unto righteousness. And you know how it says, unto righteousness. What do we go into Galatians? It's not by the law that's, that's, that's your, your made righteous. It's by your faith in Yahweh Shai. So that belief, what? That makes you righteous in the eyes of Yahweh Shai. Your belief, your faith. Okay. And with the mouth, confession is made. So confession is made through what? Through, through. <laughs> baby, just a minute, baby, just a minute. Oh, man. And with the mouth, confession is made on salvation. So if you believe, and eventually you're going to confess Yahweh Shai. Eventually. Okay. With the mouth. Why? Because that's example. I have what I have. Um, I what's it? What's it? What's it? I believe. Therefore, have I spoken? Therefore, was I greatly, greatly afflicted. So, if you believe, and over time, you know, when you first listen to, you first listen, your first hearing, you may you don't have the confidence to go out and so forth. You may do particular videos. You're studying. You're doing videos. Then you're building up courage, and all of a sudden, now you're now you're a teacher. Now you're a prophet. You know? Now you were being taught, now you're teaching others. Now with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For scripture saith, whosoever believe on, on, me, on him shall not be ashamed. So if you believe on Yahweh Shai, why are you going to be ashamed? Hmm? You're not going to be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Why is there no difference? Because they're the same. You just had one it, Jew, one was a Jew which was living in Israel and was following the customs and you had another that was a Jew but he was following the customs of the Greeks okay and that was it but he was an Israelite just like Timothy's father he was what he followed the Greek customs okay for the same Lord over is always rich unto all that court so it says for the same Lord so Who's that same Lord Yahweh Shai? Okay. That call upon him. So a Christian would read this and say, well, see, it says Greek. It says Greek. And it says all that call upon him. No, this is what those that are referring to what the church, Israel, the body of Israel, not all the world. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai shall be saved. So Christians will shut the Bible right there. No. Those that are of what? Israel. Okay. That believe. That are of the elect. How then shall they call it on him whom they have not believed? And how should they believe in him whom they have not heard? So what would that take? That means you would need a prophet, a preacher, a teacher. To teach you the word. Okay. And how should they believe in him? Of whom they have not heard and how should they without a preacher that's why you need others to teach you are, are you are you so proud you can't are you so proud you can't be taught nobody can teach you 
men they come into truth and they they get they get I've always said they get the wit they get the knowledge and they want to act like they came up with it themselves. Wrong mindset to have. No, we were taught, I was taught by the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Was that the first group I watched? No, it wasn't. The first groups I was watching was what? HODC? And who else? Who else? Who else? HODC, I think his name was Barak. And who else? Fourteen Street Israelites. That's who, I, that's who I was watching. But then you started to see certain things were not right through the spirit. Then I watched Great Millstone and everything, just it just added up. And from then I never looked back. They're the ones that had the truth. And they still do have the truth. Okay. But a lot of men, what's the main topic? The, a lot of men, they, um, they get this word. And they may just mimic what somebody else is saying. And they act like they came up with it themselves. Yahweh is not dealing with someone like that. Then when you ask these individuals a simple question. A simple question. On Yahweh Shai. They can't even answer it. That means they're not, they're, not, they're not coming in the right way. They're not being sincere. You've got to be taught again. Desire the sincere milk. Bear me just a minute. We can go to that as well. Okay. But let's, let's finish this off. Bear me just a minute. And how should they preach except they be sent? And you need the right men to be sent unto you. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And that's what we're preaching, the gospel, the good news, the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Which is coming. Okay. That's the good tidings. Good news. Yeah, we talk about the bad news, the destruction of America and so forth. Which really, that's good news to us as well. But we also teach what the good news, kingdom of heaven. Yeah, he's coming, he's coming. Okay, but let's go to um Peter see if we can find it. Yeah, a lot of men they just want to um jump head first, you know, and it comes it does come across as insincere because if you're that guy, nothing's wrong. Look, nothing's wrong, it's beautiful. Brothers are bringing up precepts, nothing's wrong with that. But if you're that guy, you got you got your phone or whatever, you know, I've got a precept, precept. You know? Oh, I know something you don't know. That that spirit. That competition that competition spirit. You know? I'm go I'm gonna bring out something you don't know. I mean really you, you don't know it. You know? And th this is this is this is you know when you're bringing out when we're doing videos? When you're reading the scripture, you expound on that scripture unless it's self unless it's self explanatory. The prophets, guess what they do? They expound on what they've just read. So you can't just read a scripture and you're not expounding on it. Yeah. You just read a scripture. Yeah. And you just move on. You have to expound on the scripture. Because if you're not expounding on it, well, where, where's the understanding? Have, are you just reading scriptures? Do you have understanding of what you're reading? Are you just reading it? Yeah. Okay. Now you've got to expound on what you've, what you've read. That shows what you're understanding. You gotta be you gotta be real with yourself in this truth. You gotta be real. You gotta be real with yourself in this truth. Because if you're not, it's gonna it's gonna be seen one way or another. It's gonna be seen. But you, you don't really know what you're speaking about. You don't really know. You you just you just you got you got men that do that. They just come into the they come into the truth. Okay, to grab the knowledge and act like they came up with it themselves. Okay. And if you are in Great Millstone, if you're a follower of Great Millstone, you could put Great Millstone on your name. Why, why have you got, you know what I'm saying? That's another, that's another thing as well. If you're in Great Millstone, why haven't you got Great Millstone? It's not, a, it's not a must, but why haven't you got Great Millstone on your name? Because ain't that a bit, what, don't you agree with the doctrine? So these things are just like giveaways as well. You got men that were that were taught by the older apostles, but they, they don't want to give credit where credit's due. So let's go to First Peter's second chapter. Okay. Wherefore laying aside all malice, and that's why men they can't be. I've always said that 
they can't be sufficient in the truth because they still got a, ma a, a, a soul that's full of malice. And wisdom of Solomon too, it says, wisdom will not dwell into a malicious soul, nor that is, uh, uh, what's it, a body that is subject to sin. Okay. So how are you able to be more sufficient and diligent by you putting away a malicious soul? So it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me when guys can't do videos because they're malicious. Okay, and you can look at someone, a lot of men, and another thing, it's good to show your face from time to time. A lot of men, they don't even want to, a lot of men have went years on end without showing their face. Years, months, why don't you want to show your face? What you got to hide? Show your face. Your man of the Lord, show your face. Okay. Because there's a lot of wickedness there. A lot of evil. Laying aside all malice or laying aside, putting aside all that malice. Malice is the intent to do injury, to do hurt. Okay, but that's the way it is. You're going to have individuals that come into the truth with that mindset. Okay. But that, the only thing is that the spirit's just not going to be dealing with you. And all guile. Okay. And what the scripture says, blesses he whose spirit is no guile. You're just teaching the word. You're not, you're, not, you're not trying to get one up on anybody. You're just teaching the word. Okay. And that's it. That's the main thing. And hypocrisies and envies. And it ain't a good thing to be envying brothers. Why are you envying a brother for? Okay. Everybody's got their own measure. You understand? Everybody's got their own measure. Everybody's got their own lot. You start, you start, you start and the scriptures talk about, um, oh, there's a word, there's a word, there's a word, there's a word. Ah, oh, man. I forgot, I forgot the name, I forgot the name. When, when you're a copycat, there's a, there's a name, there's a name for it. Okay. But you ain't supposed to be doing that. You know, cop, um, ah. There's a particular word for it when you're copying. You, you start to copy. I don't even know if certain men, you start to copy the way other men talk, how they do things, how they teach, their lingo. Which sometimes other men's lingo can be contagious, but you're not supposed to do that. Okay? You're biting how another man teaches. You're supposed to have your own spirit. Okay? Your own particular spirit you're supposed to have. Okay. That's that that all comes about through envy. When you're envying. Okay. And evil speakings. Evil speakings is really different different doctrines. That's evil speakings. Okay, and, slan and slandering as well. Slandering is evil speaking. Okay, you ain't supposed to be doing that. All right. And verse two, as newborn babes, there's newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word. So when you are a newborn babe, you're desiring the milk of the word. You don't give you don't give a baby steak. You don't give a baby what's it what's it what's it what's it what's it alcohol. You give a baby milk, so what? It's nourished. So it's the same thing in this truth. This is what you're getting nourished by, the milk. And the milk is the basics. Not something extra, extra, extra deep. The milk is the basics of the scriptures. Which you get built up on. A lot of men came in truth head first. They didn't want to learn the basics. They wanted to be super... They wanted to be super, 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 super deep. Okay. But guess what? When you're not super, super... When you try to be super, super, super deep, but you don't have the experience to match that super, super, super deepness, guess what happens? You're just going to fall. You're just going to look silly. Because, they, see, it's one thing being deep, knowing these scriptures. But again, it's another thing going through the experience to match... That's that's ready. Be, that's no. That's being deep. 
you're going through the experience and you have the knowledge to match that experience. Some men, they have the scriptures, but they don't have the, um, the experience to match the scriptures. So they're not really deep. You know what I'm saying? And in my, my, my little journey, okay, I'm, actually I'm not going to say little journey, it's been, it's been a, a, a somewhat a long journey. One hell of a journey. You appreciate the truth so much more, so much more. Okay. Because you've been through these different, these different, these different things. These different trials. So now you know how to deal with particular situations. You know how to deal with it better. Much better. Because you've been through these scenarios rather than someone that just, they have, the, they have, um, they have knowledge, but they haven't been through none of these scenarios. So they don't really know how to apply the scriptures. See, there's a difference. Rachi may grow thereby, so just, just desire the sincere milk. And in time, guess what? You're going to grow. That's how you see, you notice how it says grow. That's how you grow by desiring the sincere milk. Sincere. You don't want to deal with the basics. Oh, no, nah, maybe if I deal with the basics, people ain't, they're going to look at me like I'm an amateur. So what? It's like someone coming to the gym. You go to the gym, you're trying to lift up the heavy weights to impress people. Why are you worried about them? Start off with light weights first, then you work your way up. You want to be deep, but if I ask you a simple thing, okay? If I ask you a few simple things about the scriptures, you, you cannot answer it. So that you're not you're not you're not deep. You're trying to act deep. Be your be, be yourself in this truth. Be who Yahweh made you to be in this truth. Don't try to go above that measure because when you do that, you end up looking foolish. Little things, that example, these are the basics, discretion. Certain men talk about prudence, discretion. A prudent man foresee if the evil, okay, so are you applying the prudence in your life when you're amongst people? Are you walking about like you want to, uh, shrugging your shoulders like you want to start fights in a proud manner? That's not being prudent. That's, that's not, um, that's not using discretion. It starts, it starts with, it starts with the small things first. It all starts with small things first. And you learn the small things and you work your way up. But if you can't even do that, if you can't even use, um, what's it, discretion? And that's what Paul was saying at some in Corinthians. I cannot speak to you as, um, as spiritual because yet you are still carnal and there's envy and there's strife. Okay. This is all about being, being spiritual, being spiritual minded about this truth. Okay, and over time you start growing. If so be, you have tasted the Lord is gracious. Okay, to whom coming as unto a living stone, Yahweh Shai. And more stones as well, what living stones? Living, not dead stones, living stones. Precious stones. Okay. Disallowed indeed of men. Why does it say disallowed? It didn't say allowed, it said disallowed. Because when Yahweh came on the scene, the majority of our people rejected him. That's why it says disallowed of men. But chosen of the most high and precious. So it says chosen of the most and precious. And the elect men on this earth are precious also. Yes, also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. This is a spiritual house we're building. Spiritual. The house of the word is a spiritual house, not a carnal house. It's a spiritual house. An unholy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice. So it's a holy, you know, it says, oh, that's spiritual because there's been a topic in the last few weeks on what? The priesthood. It says holy priesthood. Did it say 
the um the Levite priesthood. This is a holy priesthood. So there's many priests within the different tribes to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable by the Most High to the Most to the Most High by Yahweh Shemashiach. Wherefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone. That chief cornerstone is Yahweh Shai. And everything is built around that cornerstone. Elect, precious, and he that believe on him shall not be confounded. Okay. So, Yahweh Shai has already laid the foundation. That he's the cornerstone, but we're building around it. Which makes up the house. And he that believe on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed. The builders are some of our own people. The same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling. So there's going to be more things that are brought out that are going to be a stumbling block to men. Okay. That's why you can't have what great areas in this truth. Okay. And a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, where unto they were appointed. Okay? So those that want to be disobedient against the word and want to do their own thing in terms of the doctrine, guess what? They're dead black and unto what? Those that are disobedient. Okay? Verse 9, but ye are chosen generation. So there's a generation within the nation of Israel that are chosen. A, they elect a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Peculiar means weird, strange. And other nations, they see we have flavor, we're different. Okay. That you should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we've been called out of darkness into what? A marvelous light, which is his word. Which in time past we were not a people, but now are the people of the Most High, which have not, not obtained mercy which have had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy okay through what Yahweh Shai through his sacrifice and that's a beautiful thing okay so with this lesson I'm going to shut off here Lord you know what usually we go in longer but I'm going to shut off here and until the next time Shalom to the hopeful elect across the globe and to you brothers and sisters learning keep pushing keep believing and until the next time Shalom